So after using the RetroTINK 5X Pro for a few days, I decided uh, to take a break with the uh, video game footage and take a look and see what type of results we could get from converting analog tape to digital using the RetroTINK 5X as our input device. So for those of you who are just discovering me through this video, um, my day job is I'm actually a video editor. And here in the office, I have some decent equipment as far as for capturing tapes and that kind of thing. And so I just wanted to see how the RetroTINK would compare to other solutions that are already on the market and uh, to see kind of if it has any strengths over those or if it has any weaknesses compared to those as well. Now, as far as the uh, settings go, everything was captured either with S-Video or with um, Composite. And then I had it set to 1080p fill and uh, with a generic 4.3 um, horizontal sampling scaling. I had uh, interpolation to sharp just to see if I could edge out any additional detail. Scan lines off, of course, vertical sync triple buffer, the interlace I put at motion adaptive just to see what that would do and then go from there and it seemed like motion adaptive ended up being the uh, the right outcome as far as that goes. And the uh, filter is four line comb, RGB full color space and the rest of these features don't really matter. Now I tried to do uh, the captures at 480p instead of 1080p, but the problem is with uh, Elgato is it wants to match your recording to your output. And so I couldn't output 480p and have the Elgato scale it up to 1080p for the capture. So that's why I decided, screw it, we'll just do 1080p fill and go from there. And then with the, the DV AVI footage I'll be showing here, it was captured at uh, 480i, and then I just soft scaled it up to, to 1080 instead. <laughs> First, I wanted to see how 8mm tapes would look. In the late 90s to early aughts, dang near every show I went to, I brought a camera. So I have a pretty decent collection of bootlegs and such. And since my 8mm camera has S-Video out, I figure the results would be a little bit better. And from what I see is the quality is ever so slightly better through the Tink, scaling to 1080p. My original capture of this tape is DV AVI at 480i. My Elgato can capture AVC HD at 1080p 60. So I scaled the video up to 1080p 60 to match. Basically, I noticed that there is just a very slight improvement on fine detail, specifically the trees behind the band or things like guitar strings show a little bit cleaner. It's not a huge improvement on what I currently have, but it's slightly cleaner. I remember one time, man, I learned a Chuck Berry intro to Johnny Be Good, man. It took me six months. I had to slow the record down, man. I learned it note for note, man. Next, we can look at 8mm's Big Brother, the Betamax format. I have Cheech and Chong's Things Are Tough All Over. The Betamax is a super beta deck, so the quality is the best that you can get with this consumer brand format. Over composite cable is actually a really clean and decent picture. Detail is good, colors are decent, just a really decent capture. But comparing this to a DV AVI capture that I previously took, again, it looks about the same to me. So I'm not seeing huge gains of visual quality. It, it just looks basically almost identical. Oh, freaking burr. Hey. After that is VHSC, just some random footage to wife recorded of me in 2006. Colors were decent, but I think in Elgato, I could have bumped the saturation just a tad because compared to the DV copy I made, the colors are ever so not as vibrant. But for the sake of argument, the DV has a color space of 411, whereas the Tink footage shows a color space of 420. But that's the color space for the Gato, not the Tink itself. So that's why I think I could have added just a touch of saturation to match the Tink's actual output and get a more true representation. After that, we have our pre-recorded VHS. Like the Betamax, the quality came through quite nicely, minimal analog noise, a nice presentation and matches watching a tape on a CRT display. 
Comparing right to left with a capture in AVDVI, it looks again almost identical to me. Now I also wanted to see what results I could get with a recorded VHS tape from TV. Steve and myself used to uh, frequent Malcolm's shop down the King's Road. It's one of the few shops you could go and hang out. So here's a special I recorded off of VH1 in April 2001, titled 25 Years of Punk. My biggest surprise was it seemed to me that comparing this to the capture I made of DVAVI, that the retro tink was a bit cleaner and more uniform in color and contrast. Out of everything I tested, this is probably by far the best test that I got. Now, I wasn't chomping at the bit to recapture all my 8mm tapes, but I may consider recapturing my broadcast recordings through the Tink if the others reveal this quality and capture as well. It feels to me like comparing the 2007 Blu-ray Master of a movie to a 2015 Special Edition Master. The first wave Blu-ray masters were usually a bit more rough than the second wave masters. So uh, in conclusion on this, if you already have a way to capture analog tapes with your current setup, um, you should probably be fine as far as uh, what you've been doing and what you're getting, as long as you have decent equipment and decent software to do it. But now if you don't have any of that stuff and you already have a RetroTink 5X and you've been doing you know, game footage with that, if you're wanting to dip your toes in doing some analog conversions, uh, the time has never been better. It seems like with the RetroTink, you're getting on par exactly with uh, other equipment that's already on the market that's available. And in some cases, the quality is ever so slightly even better. Not one single one of these tests that I do where the quality was actually less than what I've already gotten. So in all the tests I did, the quality was either exactly the same as uh, the equipment that I already have or ever so slightly better than the equipment that I already have. But I guess that about wraps it up. So if you have any comments or questions, you can go ahead and leave them down in the comment section below. And I guess until next time, peace out.